Welcome and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this video, I'm going to be doing a bit of a, a before you buy kind of deal or a current state of the game, should I say. So it's not going to be for people who play the game. Uh, well, maybe you also want to watch it. But generally, this is going to be for if you want to buy the game, if you've heard of it, but you're not quite sure um, if you want it. I'm going to be doing just a kind of a breakdown of what uh, what's in the game, uh, what's how much time you can put into it and the current kind of state of it uh in my personal opinion the personal the state's going to be uh but yeah without without any further ado uh let's just get into it if you do enjoy it and if you do find it helpful please be sure to give me a like and subscribe and yeah like i said let's get into it so first things first uh for the division two is going to be story now i have a i do have a a notepad pulled up so if you see me looking across uh that's what i'm looking at but um the first things first when you buy division two you're going to get the story and you're going to need to finish the story in order to really start late game and um the late game is in my personal opinion where it is uh so let's start off with story first so First things first, you have base game division two, which has a main story of about twenty six hours, according to um, how long to beat. I can attest to that. Um, if you do extra the side quests, I'm assuming it's forty seven hours. I don't agree with the completionist time. I have a thousand. I have over. I'm not actually sure how many hours I do have. Uh, division. To library. I'm currently standing on just over a thousand hours in the game, and I haven't gotten any uh, everything yet. So I'm not quite sure about that completionist score. Maybe if you're going for it from the start, sure, but I'm not sure. And then on top of that, you have Warlords of New York. If you buy it, um, you get an additional ten hours of gameplay and. Uh, 20 and a half hours if you're doing completionist run but um that's about the time you can expect out of it in my personal opinion the story isn't it isn't excellent but it isn't terrible either it's just kind of there for you to work through um it it sorts as a tutorial for late game basically uh is how i can explain it uh the one upside to division two is you don't need division one in order to um, follow the story, it leaves some stuff out, but generally the story um, you pick up on decently well. The only thing I can say is maybe uh, at the end of the DLC something happens, and if you don't have, if you haven't played a Vision One, it's not going to be in co as in context as it would have if you have played Division One. Uh, yeah, that's the story. Generally, like I said, it's it's there. Um, it's not terrible, but it's also not the best. Uh, but after the story, uh, you can come something that it adds to the story if you're interested in um, lore, or it adds to the lore, should I say. Uh, that is what you can unlock, uh, is the manhunts. So... I currently have a manhunt going, and if I hit F, you'll see I have legacy manhunts going on through uh, all the way to uh, Vanguard, which was the last manhunt. Uh, this manhunt will also go uh, pop up there as soon as um, yeah, as soon as this manhunt passes, it'll also be in legacy manhunts. So you have access to all those manhunts, and they do add. Some tidbits of stories if you follow them uh but not i don't know it's it's fun uh, and it gives you some some of them give you uh some skill rewards and things like that uh but the main way you unlock these manhunts is just by finishing your battle pass which is the free tier um i know a lot of people always cringe when you say battle pass but this game at the very least uh it isn't that bad if you look at your free tier of battle pass uh i just want to scroll through real quick unless i actually took that out of the battle pass and i missed it which it seems like it may have been uh done as of recently or probably as of 
yeah, it seems they took it out. Okay, so you probably just have access to the manhunts now. Uh, when you reach level 40. Uh, and then you can do those legacy manhunts. After that, the end game starts, and I'd say the true multiplayer starts. Now you can do multiplayer with people through the story. It's not that you can't, it's just it's not necessary. In game, however, um you can play solo, you can play with solo uh, while queuing with people. Uh so that's why I'm that's why we're getting to the player base. Now, the player base currently this was in maintenance, uh, so I wouldn't bother too much with this numbers. Uh, there was maintenance going on uh, yesterday, so that's why it's that like that. But generally, you can expect over weekends around a 3,000 hour, uh, 3,500 people peak in game. Uh, this is on Steam specifically. Uh, and since this is a Ubisoft launcher game, this isn't giving you all the data that you need. Uh, but I wasn't, I tried looking, I couldn't find a way to see how many people are in game on Ubisoft. So, yeah. Uh, but 3,000 people, assuming it's double that on Ubisoft, which I'm assuming it's going to be more, but that gives you about 6,000 people. So, game's doing okay. Sure, it's not at its all time peak, but it's not terrible. And, um, yeah, it's there. After that, we start reaching in. After that, now that you finish your story, you hit end game. And this is where mainly the lo the the real time spend comes in. You mainly spend a lot of time in the shooting range building builds. Now, this is the skill character. So, I have skill damage and I have some pseudo, I have a healing build and some, some pseudo... F Flame builds and a, like a pseudo DPS skill build. Uh, but that's not really important. The main thing with your builds are you're looking at um, 395 uh, different items. Now, the, uh, the gear sets in this case, so all of these uh, count as one. Uh, you do have one piece of each body part, but I'm just doing this in proficiency, basically. So you have these all just count as one. The main bulk of the stuff uh, is in um, named and exotic gear pieces, as well as named uh, and exot uh, named and exotic weapons. So there's a way to play around. Uh, building builds, hitting end game. Uh, when you have a proper build done, you can branch off into um, the incursion. As okay, we'll start with incursion first. Now, incursion is a four-person uh, raid difficulty. Uh, you can say, um, but you can actually match make for it, which is awesome. Uh, that gives you some a high difficulty uh, mission to do. I'm hoping they expand more on the incursion, maybe giving us a few more. Uh, but we'll see. Along with the incursion that you can match make for is the legendary missions. Now your legendary mission, uh, you can cycle through legendary uh, each week. One of the strongholds, uh, it's legendary. So now uh, this week it is um, District Union Arena. Uh, otherwise it can be Manning Zoo. It can be Tidal Basin. It can be Roosevelt Island as well as a few more uh, can be legendary the legendary gives you a guaranteed exotic cash and that just gives you an exotic weapon uh, but that's for if you're playing um building builds in end game summit and countdown are both some replayable missions basically countdown is a um it's the same every time you drop into a map uh, it shows your objectives, you do your objectives, and you extract within a time limit, um, giving you countdown tokens, and you can use those tokens at a countdown vendor in the boo to get some more gear. The summit is a place, uh, it's just a tower, basically, from, from floor 1 to floor 100. You can climb up through the floors any difficulty you like. Uh, this is, as far as I know, the only other place you can get legendary difficulty, um, outside of the legendary mission. 
uh, and uh, of course, I mean, I mean, raids and countdown difficulties are, I believe, separate from legendary. Uh, so yeah, but that is I spend most of my time in countdown. If I'm being honest. Now I mentioned raids. The one downside to the raids, we have two of them. Now the one downside to raids, they're fun, but they are a eight person uh, necessary if you want to do them on the heroic difficulty in order to get um, the raid exclusive exotic drops you need to. Um, that comes down to player base. You can't matchmake for these, sadly. Uh, I was hoping that they w would have added matchmaking. Uh, you can matchmake for um, normal difficulty, so not um, heroic, but uh, you can matchmake for exploration, I believe it's called. I don't recall uh, raid menu. You quickly check that out. Black Tusk have occupied the uh, yeah, you can you can match make for normal armament, normal or discovery. You can match make for discovery. Normal is the yeah. Shut up. Normal is the base difficulty, and then you have discovery, which removes a lot of the mechanics for it. Uh, if you want to do raids. If you get to that point, uh, you can find people uh, on Discord. Uh, Division 2's Discord used to have voice servers. They now have a channel which you can go in ahead and ask. They're relatively active people there. Other than that, uh, Tux has a is a fellow YouTuber. He has a Discord server that is very active when it comes to uh, raid groups. They usually raid uh, two times a week, I believe, if I recall correctly. Uh, but you, so you can actually go and do raids with them. Uh, they have wonderful people that will actually teach you raids if they're doing a teaching raid or if you just want to run through and experience it. They have some uh, experienced people that do give decent call outs. So story, manhunt, player base, incursion, raid, countdown, summit and legendary has been covered. So that is essentially end game is building builds to do these harder um to do the harder content uh there are some like side stuff you can do um like the man hunts the man hunts in some of them you do get skills um that you don't have access to normally that you need to do the man hunt for um but most of them i uh, just give you a patch the final end in game that i think most people end up doing uh there's two things so the first off is exp expertise now the expertise system basically just allows you to um upgrade your weapons and gear beyond level f uh base level 40 basically or upgrade their effects now i'm proficient with everything in the game so i am at expertise level 26 that is the highest you can currently get sorry no I have one pistol that I'm not expertise with. It's the new one that was added with this uh, event. Uh, but it's not going to give me another level. That would give me uh, another 10 levels, I believe, if I max it out. So that's going to be... I'd be at uh, 26, and this would be at 20 out of 90. Regardless, going through playing with weapons, uh, donating resources gives you expertise. Uh, I have a... I have a mini series of three videos that I will um, I'll link the playlist down below that teaches you about building builds and expertise uh, and how to do everything of that nature. But that's end game, and then collecting the the uh, resources to actually level the weapons after you've reached expertise, and then finally, and I think it's the final thing you really can do under progression. You have collectibles, which you can start uh, finishing off, which is uh, collecting comms, footage, uh, and so on and so forth, as well as the commendation page, which is just um, like Descent. I did not mention Descent, actually. That's another thing. Uh, it's new, so it slips my mind. I'll mention that now. But um, combat merit, so finish a mission on hard or above, getting to an headshots and... Yeah, it's just a normal commendation system. Uh, caveat, like I just saw Descent. Now, Descent, you can find at any one of the booze. It's this. It is a... I don't know how to explain it. You go in there with no gear. Uh, so you don't have any gear. You have talent slots that you can uh, populate by going through the missions. 
Uh, you clear rooms, gain talents, uh, kind of like a roguelite. You gain tokens, and at the door of this, there is a terminal, which you can then upgrade the amount of ammo you can carry, the um, amount of slots you have, the amount of rolls you can do, stuff like that. Uh, so it's kind of a roguelite mini game within the game. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking if I missed anything. Oh, yeah. Um, I missed... I didn't mention this because I'm personally not sure what this is. I haven't watched any spoilers on it. I believe it is missions that you get. I think there's six of them across the map if you buy it. Now, I don't have the... I don't actually have the the pack for this. Um, it is... I'm not sure if there's a, a version of the game that you can buy to get them. Uh, but I know for me, uh, add-ons. It's on the add-ons tab. Uh, it's the... It's this. It's the year one bundle. So if you can buy something with the year one bundle, um, you'll have access to those... Missions. Uh, I wanted to see if it says over here somewhere, but I'm not. I can't see it uh, immediately. Uh, but yeah, that is. That's pretty much everything I can mention. Um, down to my own opinion on the game. Is it worth it in 2024? Yes. Uh, I like. I like the game. Uh. I think a lot of the videos that people are making from, uh, in terms of Division is, Division is dead or, uh, Division is uh, losing its players trust and stuff comes down to the devs, which they are, f it is frustrating at some point in the game, uh, because the devs do tend to nerf weapons, um, outright for no apparent real reason or people in the dark zone of PVP complain, um, because some some things are OP, so then the devs nerf stuff, and then they nerf PVE into the ground as well, and it's, they don't really listen uh, to the extent that they do. Uh, I missed PVP, I didn't put it on my list, uh, I'll add that now, but um, yeah, so general state of the game, I'd say is okay. Um, it's kind of uncertain at this point, because there are some things that we are, uh, as a, uh, the Division 2 community, we are trying to uh, plea with them. Seasonal characters is one thing that we don't want. Um, the nerfs incoming is also something we don't want. Now, it didn't come this last update, I believe. I did scan through it. I didn't see anything. It's mainly, um, seems bug fixes for the man and stuff. But, um, yeah. So, state of the game, generally, I would say it's okay. It's not as good as it could be, but it's okay. So, I would say it is worth it. Now, if you are the main reason I didn't mention PvP and I'm leaving it to the end is I can't really have an opinion on the PvP because I don't do it a lot. I live in South Africa, so my ping is too high. Um, I can't s say the state of PvP doesn't have hackers. There are definitely an amount of hackers. I don't do it enough to say that it's rampant or uh, something like that. I do a lot of dark. I do some dark zone. Uh, runs and I haven't ran into that many especially since the new update where they uh, changed the dark zones to where the um, the invader dark zone which is the one with a knife this one uh, it switches around but the dark zone with a knife is invaded those rogues can go rogue quicker so I tend to avoid them for the more peaceful uh, the more peaceful dark zones and I'm assuming hackers would be running in here mostly if there are. I don't see many. Um, the, uh, what do you call it? The conflict is a team-based PvP matchmaking system. There isn't, I haven't met any hackers there. I've done, I did a, a few runs uh, a while back when I was looking for some uh, named caches for docs and exclusive items uh, because you can get them out there as well. But, um, yeah, that's PvP. Like I said, can't really give my opinion on it, um, because I don't do it a lot. I don't. Ha I don't tend to enjoy PvP. Uh, I do enjoy the PVE a lot though. Um, but yeah, that I'd say is. I'd pretty much say that is the state of the game. 
uh, or in my opinion, that's the state of the game, and it is worth it. Uh, I I believe outside of the story that um I showed you guys, outside of this. What would this be? If let's assume you're not doing completionist runs, uh, let's assume you're just doing um, main plus extra. I'm assuming that's side quests. Uh, that gives you well over sixty hours worth of gameplay. I think you can run. I don't know. I think I've done most combinations in this game, or I've tried most combinations at this game at a thousand hours. If you're really rushing and you're putting in time, you get you get lucky. You might be able to get it done by 500. So I'd say you it's a safe bet to say you have about 500 hours uh, before hitting the the like wall of there's nothing I want to do now anymore. Unless you just enjoy the the way the game plays and continues. Uh, but yeah. That is all I have to say. I do hope this was useful and I do appreciate the fact that you're watching because this is a bit of a longer, it's not my longest video, but it is a long video for what it is. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate you guys watching and uh, if you did enjoy, please be sure to hit like, subscribe and yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.